Hey folks, Professor K here, and it's time for padding and positioning. So we're finally to the point in our mobile mockup where we're starting to really tie down padding and positioning and getting everything in the right place. And I'm going to start by changing the position of this recipe for disaster headline. So the first thing I'm going to do is decide how I want to select it. And in this case, because I only want this to apply to this one little piece, I'm going to use a class selector, recipe intro title, just copy that and paste this in my CSS. Now, as far as ordering goes in my CSS, I like to go from like real general to real specific, and then in order of top down on the page. So H2 is really general. This recipe card is really general. That's being used in multiple places. And then ingredients is next, and that's really specific. So I'm going to put my recipe intro title here because that comes before my ingredients, and it's the same level of specificity in my CSS. All right, so what can I do here? What are my options? Well, we actually have a couple of options that we can take a look at here. And I'm just going to open pop code here and demonstrate them real quick with a div slash div and then a span inside text slash span. And I'm going to write some real simple CSS in here. So I'm going to have a margin of 100 pixels. I'm going to put on a background so it's a little easier for you to see. Background gray. Cool. So margin is the space around the outside. Let's actually make that 50 pixels. And then I want some space on the inside too. So that's padding. And we're just going to make that to the same amount, 50 pixels. Cool. So 50 pixels of space around each. And then let's take a look at our span. Let's do a border of five pixels, solid red, so we can see what it's doing. Awesome. Divs are going to take up all the space they can. So that's why this is taking up all of the width of the page. If we were to put a width on this, it would be smaller than that. So the reason why the span does not take up the full width is because it's a different type of display. It's display inline instead of display block by default. So how could we change that? We could change the display property to block. And now you can see it takes up as much space as it can. So just some things to note there. All right. So what do we want to do here? We want to learn more about positioning. So positioning is going to do things like take an item out of the flow. And to demonstrate this, I'm also going to put a border of five pixels solid and blue here, just so we can see. Okay. So I'm just going to do some real quick demos here. Position static. Static does nothing because that's the default. This is position static. With position static, the content stays wherever it naturally falls in the CSS. You also have a couple of other options here. I'm actually going to use my web inspector to show you these just so that you can see what the values are. So here are all the possible values. Let's just arrow through them. Here's absolute. Huh, what happened there? With absolute positioning, the item is taken out of the flow. What does that mean? This space is no longer respected in the CSS. So if you go up to the div here, the reason why this still has any sort of height to it is because of the padding on it. You can see this in the layout. It's actually got a height of zero, and that's because we've absolutely positioned this, and that means there's no height on it. The div doesn't care about this. So if we went and we took the padding off of here, that would actually completely get rid of this text. All right, so actually, you know what? Just to make this a little bit clearer here, instead of having a padding on this, I'm going to have a margin on my span. So this is going to like have the same visual effect, but it's a little bit different because now our space is around the span. So same visual effect, but now with the span, see that yellow, the margin is around it and the div has no padding. So you can use some tricky ways to change this sort of relationship. All right. So we were going through the different positioning. Absolute means that the parent div will not respect the space anymore. Fixed does the same thing. All right, fine. So what's the difference between absolute and fixed? Well, 
we need the page to be a little taller for this. So let's show this in style.css. So I'm going to put my recipe intro title to position fixed, and then I'm going to see how it no longer respects the space. Perfect. I'm going to do top zero. And when I scroll, it's going to stay in that same position. If I do it absolute, top zero, same spot, but when I scroll, it doesn't scroll with me. That's the difference between absolute and fixed. All right, what's up next in our options here? We've gone through absolute, fixed, inherit is just whatever is above it. Initial is whatever it initially was. Relative is going to be relative to the parent. So this is saying relative to div, position me somewhere. So to really see the effects of this, you need to have a top and then like 10 pixels. So see how that position this relative to the div above it? Let's try absolute instead. Let's take off this margin. Okay, so no margin. The text is now positioned absolutely and top 10 pixels. If it's relative, it's 10 pixels from the div. Instead of being positioned relative to the div, the parent, when this is absolute, it just looks as far up as it can go until it finds something that it can position itself to. And in this case, it's the body. Now, if you wanted, you could say position relative here and you would get the same sort of behavior as with a position relative here, but you would get things respecting each other. So whether or not something is positioned relatively is really important actually. So let's just demonstrate that again. This is absolute. Here we have a div. If it's position relative, the absolutely positioned div is going to position itself 10 pixels from the top of this div. If this position relative isn't here, if we uncheck it, now it's 10 pixels to the next nearest parent that has a position relative on it. So in that case, that happens to be nothing. So it's just the root of the HTML. That's why it moves. So this position relative is really important. If you can't get something to position close to or with a relationship to a certain element, try adding this position relative. All right, let's see what else we've got here. The final one that's really helpful to have is sticky. So sticky is like fixed, really hard to demonstrate without actually having something scrollable. So let's just put it in here, position sticky. So see how with sticky, even with the top zero, this still stays where it originally was. When you scroll, once it hits the top, then it gets that fixed positioning. So this actually requires a couple properties to work properly. See how it's like kind of stopping at the end of there. You actually need a couple more things for this to work totally properly. But the idea is that this is for things like sticky navigation, when you want things to stick to the top of the page. So that's an overview of all of your positioning options. I'm going to pause here, let you kind of um, take a break, you know, absorb all those. And then I'm going to show you how I actually apply these to the, your favorite recipe assignment. I'll see you in just a moment.